Solve for the variable as the directions. The square root of 3 tangent of x equals 1. So when we're all done, we just want x equals and some junk after that. Good times. I'm going to copy that down here real quick. Uh, let me pick a nice color. We haven't done red yet. I'm so angry. Red. Well, the first thing you want to do is suggest it is to isolate the trigonometric function first, tangent of x equals 1 or the square root of 3. Now, you totally can, if you want to, rationalize. We're not going to. Instead, what we're going to do is a little sleight of hand. Because, as we already know, tangent is sine over cosine. And since tangent isn't directly on the unit circle, it's best to think of it in terms of sine and cosine, meaning instead of 1 over the square root of 3, we could write it as 1 half over radical 3 over 2. Because then the 2s would just cancel. If you had rationalized, this would have been harder to see. So since I, tangent is sine over cosine, for what values of x is sine 1 half and is cosine radical 3 over 2? For what values of x is sine 1 half and cosine radical 3 over 2? Or what angle, I should say. For what angles is sine 1 half and cosine radical 3 over 2? At the same time. 30 degrees. However, in math, two negatives make a positive. So that's another option. So for what value of x is sine of x negative 1 half and cosine of x negative radical 3 over 2? 210 degrees. If only we were done. We're not done because 390 degrees is also an answer, as is if I kept adding or subtracting 360 degrees if we were in terms of degree. So instead of listing all the answers, which would take forever, instead what we do is we summarize them all. So it would be these values plus any coterminal values. What I suggest we do is we draw a little picture, because instead of having two lists, we can get away with one. So 30 degrees is about right here. 210 degrees is directly across from it. So notice if we keep flopping around 180 degrees, we get another answer. Does everyone see that okay? This is fun. Everyone should do that. So every 180 degrees on top of 30 or below 30, we get another result. So the way to write that mathematically would be x is equal to 30 degrees plus k times 180 degrees. What is this k you're talking about? k is any integer multiple of 180. So if you add 180, if you add 2 times 180, if you add 3 times 180, or integers could also be negative, so subtract 180, subtract 2 times 180, so on and so forth. So you get to write k is an integer. So this says 30 degrees, and you can add 180 or subtract 180 as many times as you like, and you still get another answer. If you do not like writing sentences, who does? This is in English. You could write this symbol. K is in a set of integers. So double bar R's mean real, double bar Z's mean integers. 
Because as everyone knows, integer starts with the letter Z in German. That part's true. All right, so again, the tangent ones are sort of the hard ones because you have to think of it in terms of sine and cosine, but draw a picture. Now, if they had said X is an answer between 0 and 360, then you would only say 30 degrees and 210. If they don't say that, then you have to have a K involved. It depends on the type of problem. In this case, we were able to go every 180 degrees to get an answer. However, if they weren't directly across from each other from the origin, or we'll see another example later on, then you would have to make two lists, one for the first value, one for the second value, which we'll see pretty soon.